If two values are known in a column, we're going to be able to fill in the whole ice table. And that's where I want to start. That same equilibrium system we did a case study on and then a whole bunch of data. So I'm just going to write the chemical reaction again that's up there. So I'm going to first with one color write in all the information that's given to us and then I'll start filling in my ice table. Uh, on the smart board I find I don't have enough room to put units in. It clutters it up. So I always write my units next to my ice table. If you do that on a quiz that's okay. If you're writing an AP exam please put the units right next to all the numbers. They're not going to like my uh, strategy. Okay? But again, if I try to put the number here and then the units it just doesn't fit nicely. It really clutters it up. So initial conditions, hydrogen gas, 0 0.022 or 22 millimoles per liter might be another way you'd see that. Uh, iodine gas, 24 millimoles, 0 0.024 moles per liter. Okay. Hydrogen iodine gas, zero. Now I'm going to start leaving this out. If you're not told about a product at the beginning, you're going to assume it's zero. Assume if not told. Okay. After the reaction went to equilibrium, the concentration of iodine, that guy was eight millimoles per liter, 0 0.008 moles per liter. And that uses up all the given data that I have. So now I have to do some analysis. If you know two values in a column, you can complete the whole ice table. And that's what we have with our iodine. We know the beginning, we know the end. I can figure out this C. Stoichiometry lets me figure out all the other C's and then I can fill out all the other columns. But the first place to start is look for two values. So essentially this becomes 24 minus something is 8. What is that? Without using a calculator. 6. Perfect. I'm glad. Yeah. So 16 millimol millimoles or 0 0.016. Now I'm going to use stoic to figure out the other C's. Okay. I'm not going to write the required over given to go here. This is, has a coefficient of 1 and that has a coefficient of 1. So I'm going to leave out the multiply by 1, divide by 1. Okay. They have the same, same coefficients, so they have the same changes. Here, I've got to do that doubling we did before. Okay, if I want to go from iodine to hydrogen iodide, it's one unit turns into two. It's a doubling. Okay. And we're going to see that same change here in our stoic. We've got a double 16, so that's going to be 32. Now that's a product. Okay. I never use the stoic step to tell me the sign. I always, have, always use brain power to figure out what goes up and what goes down. Okay. Most of the time reactants go down and products go up, but not all the time in this unit. You will get the occasional question where products go down and reactants go up because reactions can go both ways. But when you start with no product, you can't use any up. That's impossible. 0.032, so you end up with 0.032. And I've, I've figured, well, almost completed the whole ice table. I just need to go back and do that first column. So the first step is to do a column. The second step was to do all my C's. And then my third step 
is to complete the missing columns, the E values at the end. Right. Same sequence as we attacked a lot of these problems last year. So 22 minus 16 is 6. 0 0.006. Okay. I now know all my E concentrations. In Chem 20, we call the E's what you have at the end. Okay. In Chem 30, we say what you have at equilibrium. It's nice that it's E for and, E for equilibrium. It works in both cases. Okay. These values we're going to learn, we're about to learn how to make that equilibrium constant out of. Okay. Instead of percentage yields, we'll use an equilibrium constant. So this course, again, is going to center on KC values. Now, if you flip open your data booklets, we're about to talk about K values, and you have a whole bunch in here. So I just want to let you know where they're at. Uh, one main spot, you're going to use them, all the acids and bases. A lot of them have K values. Now, because they're acids on page 8 and 9, you have a whole bunch of equilibrium values. So we're going to use those in a later chapter. Okay. And you'll be given K values in questions, but that's the main data table. You may be last year wondering what were those Ka values. You're finally going to learn uh, what an equilibrium value is. Kc stands for any reaction. That's this little c is the generic subscript. Okay. Uh, all equilibrium for the same reaction will have this same value okay. at a given temperature. Okay. You should know reactions are temperature dependent. Okay. That's why we cook food. You want your pasta to cook in water, if you don't heat it up, leave it for a couple weeks. It'll slowly soften. You heat it up to make it go faster. So for any reaction, okay. uh, so here's my generic nomenclature for reaction. The little letters are stoichiometric coefficients and the big letters are chemicals. So A amount of A and B amount of B makes C amount of C and D amount of D. And this is the format for equilibrium law expressions. When I do examples, it will make more sense for you. So you take the concentration in chemistry, in chemistry, square brackets, means concentration. Okay. We have to use moles per liter. Okay. Take the concentration of your first product raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. Multiply by the next product, its concentration, raised to the power of how many there are. Okay. You're going to divide it by the same format for the reactants. What's the concentration of the first reactant to its power times the second reactant to its power? If there were three reactants, you would just do it three times instead of twice. Look at products on the top, reactants on the bottom. Now, we only include chemicals that change in equilibrium law expression. So there's a few, there's some circumstances where we're chemical and its concentration doesn't change, and we leave those out. So a couple things that have concentrations that don't change include the first big one is water. Okay. If you have a reaction in water and you make a little bit of water, you're not really changing the concentration of water. Okay. So you don't include it in the equilibrium value. Okay. So this would be Water liquid is a product or a reactant, and it's in an aqueous system, which means there's tons of water. 
So if you make a couple tenths of a mole of water and it's sitting in 200 moles of water, the amount of water you made is trivial. We don't include water. What really happens is the water value is built into the Kc. This is a constant. The concentration of water is a constant, so we lump all the constants together. Second circumstance, you don't include solids. Okay. If you go to dissolve an ionic compound, how much you dump in the bottom doesn't matter. Okay. If you're making a saturated salt solution, only so much salt can dissolve into water. Okay. Dumping more solid, like sodium chloride would still, sodium chloride solid would fit here too, dumping more salt into water doesn't keep putting more and more salt ions. There's just only so much dissolves. Okay. So don't include solids in equilibrium law expressions and don't include liquid water if it's an aqueous system. Okay. Water vapor, totally different, but don't include liquid water in, an, in that aqueous system. Okay. So students are generally a bit confused. This doesn't make a lot of sense. We're going to do some examples and then it becomes one of the more easy skills we're going to do in this course. So I haven't typed it out, uh, but the question is, write the equilibrium law expression. We're not solving it, we're just writing the expression, which is products divided by reactants with the right coefficients. That's the expression. You will get diploma questions that are just write the expression. So I like to get that fraction in right away. So I have to start with products. We have nitrogen dioxide gas. So I need its concentration. So I use a square bracket. Concentration of NO2 gas. Okay. Let's close the square bracket. Okay. There are two of them, so that becomes the power. I ended up squaring that concentration. Okay. There is not a second product, so I do not have another term to write. I am done with my products. Now I can move to the bottom. Nitrogen monoxide gas. Close my bracket concentration. There are two of them, so I have to square that term. Then I move on to oxygen gas, square bracket for concentration. I'm not going to put a multiply in because in mathematics, two brackets next to each other imply multiplication. You can write it in if you want, but I, I want. I'm, you know, you've been doing that for years probably in math, next to, next, next to each other brackets. There's only one of these, so this power is one, and we don't write powers of one mathematically. So that is my equilibrium law expression. I have no water and no solids to contemplate removing. Okay. So hopefully, I think generally students see this and then like, okay, it hopefully makes a bit more sense of what these expressions look like. Okay. When I put up the A's and the B's, I get lots of confusion. Okay. So after one example, hopefully you can do this. So I'll call on a volunteer in a minute, but I'd like everybody to write the equilibrium law expression for this, and then we'll... All the chemicals are included here, but we do have a solid, and we don't include solids, and the reason we do solids don't affect the equilibrium. Uh, extra solid just sits on the bottom as a pile, and more solid doesn't drive the reaction more, okay, as we see with uh, uh, putting salt in water. So we need to leave this out. If you're wondering what it is when you drop something, it's really a one that goes in its place. Now, you mathematically don't have to write the one here. I'm just putting in for emphasis. The big thing I don't want you to do is put a zero in when you drop something. That is mathematically incorrect. Okay. So in dropping it, it's a one. Okay. So this one had a, a bit of a quirk to it. Watch out for those solids. Don't include those in the equilibrium law expression. Okay. So that's a correct answer, or that is what most students will write. Okay, last one before we're going to do a few math examples and actually solve for KC values. Okay. I guess the last thing I, I should emphasize, these values you put in have to be at equilibrium. 
So they're not I values, they're those E values. Okay? And that's why we need these values. I could solve for the K value here. I know all the E values. I could write the expression and plug the numbers in and solve for it, but it's not the I's. You'll get undefined and zeros if you plug in I. It's the E values to tell us the equilibrium constant. Can you write the equilibrium law expression for this one? Got several pieces and lots of powers. Yeah, so we have liquid water, and then you gotta say, is this an aqueous system? And yeah, we see at least one aqueous chemical. So we would exclude that water. If I was trying to give you a picture of this, we would certainly need some sort of sealed vessel so this is me meant to be my poor diagram of like a screw on cap. That's why I did the, the circles. I know my art skills. There's a reason I teach chemistry and not art. Okay. So we would have an aqueous bottom phase and then a gas phase on the top. So that's what this would look like. Okay. So this reaction is gonna use up a little bit of this water, but it's gonna be so trivial compared to this big pile of water that's sitting down there. So we're gonna exclude that water. And it's not really totally excluded from the math. It's a constant and it's in the KC value. It's built in. Water, pure water is 55.5 moles per liter. And it's just built in. 